Not many people have heard of Cypress College, and we're about to see why. Here's a clip of a Cypress College professor kind of haranguing a student who is in favor of the police by telling him that the police trace their history back to slave patrols. Listen. All right, so uh, you brought up the police <clears throat> in your speech a few times. Um, so what is your, like, what is your main concern? Since, I mean, About honestly, the whole reason police, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's, it is systemic. The issue is systemic because the whole reason we have police departments in the first place, where did it stem from? What's our history going back to what Jeremy was talking about? What, where it was, what does it stem from? It stems from people in the South wanting to capture runaway slaves. Maybe they shouldn't be heroes. Maybe they don't belong on a kid's show. Uh, so I disagree with the, what Jeremy, Jeremy said about it because uh, I think cops are heroes and they have to have a difficult job, but we have to have that All of them? life. Oh, I, I'm not, I mean, I'd say uh, a good majority of them. You have bad people in every business and every yeah, part. Yeah, uh, well, wait, a wait, lot wait, of wait, police wait. officers have committed atrocious crimes and have gotten away with it and have never been convicted of any of it. And, and I say this as a person who has family members who are police officers. Yes, I, I, I understand. Um, and this is what I believe. This is my opinion. And this is, you know, not popular to say, but... Uh, I do support our police and we have bad people and the people that do bad things should be brought to justice. I agree with that. But I think that, uh, I say, I'm saying it again. They haven't. Well, I agree with you on that point of they should, right? Okay, so what is and, your bottom line point? You're saying police officers should be revered, viewed as heroes. They I, belong I think on TV shows with children. That's I think they are happen. heroes in a sense because they come to your need and they come and help you and, they have a problem just like every other business, but we should fix that. But I think they're, they're heroes. Well, they're I think that's the problem, is looking at it as a business, because they're actually supposed to protect and serve. Now, uh, this is, uh, well, first of all, this is a lie that has been promulgated by uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones, the um, author of the 1619 Project. And so that's probably where this professor gets it from. The one thing you got to learn about these academics is that many of them do no original research. They do no original thinking. They see an article here, they pick it up from somewhere else. They are not in a position to know any different. And so they just put on an academic air, or they wave around their PhD and they act like they know, even though they clearly don't know. What's interesting about this professor is she doesn't even seem to realize that she's saying something that is highly uh, preposterous, uh, at the very least debatable, but she's giving it with that kind of air of professorial authority. Now, the truth of the matter is that prior to the modern policing system in America and in the West, there was a sort of vigilante justice system. Think of the uh, old West and how disputes were settled and how outlaws were kept away. You hired your own gunslingers to do it. Uh, and then there began the, the practice of communities uh, getting people, volunteers typically, to do community watch. Initially, it was just community watches by night. Eventually, community watches by day. People in the neighborhood would look out for bad guys. Uh, and then the French uh, began the practice of modern policing. State hired policemen. Uh, the system was then taken up in a modified way in England. And the American tradition, not entirely surprisingly, is based upon the code of kind of the London Bobbies, the idea of a professional police force whose job it is to keep the law, uh, enforce the law. Now, admittedly, in the days of the Old South, there were very bad laws, slave patrols. The laws ultimately were made to catch runaway slaves. And even after slavery, there were laws that had the effect of suppressing blacks from exercising rights and even voting. Democratic laws, by the way. And the police were called upon to enforce those laws. Let's remember, the police don't make the law. The police are the instruments of carrying out the law. The people, of course, responsible for the law are the democratic legislators who put that in the law. So this idea that you can see there's a displacement here, an effort to take the um, actions of Democrats in the South, both to affirm slavery, uh, slave codes. Remember, every segregation law in the South 
was passed by a democratic legislature enforced by a democratic governor, uh, and there is no exception to this rule. So this professor, I'm not sure if she's just a, a kind of a Yahoo who doesn't know any of this, um, or if she knows, uh, but is picking out this one strand from Nicole Hannah-Jones to deceitfully imply, to transfer responsibility from the real culprits, which is the Democrats, onto this professional police force and say that because they were enforcing the law in that case, therefore the whole history of policing everywhere in the country, if not in the world, is related to slavery and slave catching. This is complete mendacity, complete foolishness. And the very fact that it's traveling under the banner of academia tells you all you need to know about academia, or at least about Cyprus College.